the sole kidney uh, kept, has been able to keep the rabbit alive indefinitely. And uh, the same crime protection uh, mixture used by the uh, crime organization Alcor. And uh, that same uh, mixture has also been used to perfuse rabbits. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, the brain ultrastructure shows that there's no ice formation whatsoever. So um, some people think that in order to preserve the brain, you need to know how it works. But uh, I don't think that's true. A, a kidney produces urine and a brain produces consciousness. And if you can <laughs> restore the structure and physiology, I would say that you've restored, probably restored the function. And a bit of uh, support for this argument is that uh, human subjects uh, undergoing hypothermic surgery uh, will show complete electrostral silence. And when they're rewarmed, they show no neurological deficit. I mean, they have no EEG pattern. Uh, so uh, one problem with cooling, though, is that uh, when you go from minus uh, 130 degrees Celsius liquid nitrogen temperature, uh, you can call, cause thermal stress, uh, which will produce cracking. Uh, and, it, and by physical law, you should be able to cool slowly enough uh, to prevent cracking, but it might, you might have to be, spend years doing that. And we just don't have that time, so we, we cool uh, reasonably slowly, several days to get to liquid nitrogen temperature. Uh, and uh, there have been plans made to store at near minus 130 degrees to avoid this cracking problem. But cracking is really not uh, anywhere near as damaging as freezing, so that's some consolation. Now, let's move on to the subject of dead. We're working with uh, supposedly people who are dead. Uh, until the 1950s, uh, it was believed that once your heart stopped, you're uh, permanently dead. But now it's, it's common that uh, people who've, who've uh, received CPR and defibrillators uh, within six minutes of cardiac arrest are uh, so-called brought back to life. Um, some people have the misconception, though, that after the six minutes, the brain is uh, irreversibly damaged or destroyed. Uh, from the ischemic injury. But actually, uh, Peter Safar um, showed uh, over 30 years ago that dogs could survive 12 minutes of cardiac arrest when he treated them with epinephrine, heparin, and, and uh, uh, dextran-40. And uh, more recently, uh, another t a team showed that they could, uh, just by increasing perfusion, cerebral perfusion pressure, the six-minute limit could be ex extended to 12 minutes. Uh, neurons are actually uh, fairly tolerant of ischemia. If you stop the blood flow in the cerebral cortex of a rat, um, it takes uh, six hours before 15% uh, of the neurons become necrotic. And you have to wait 12 hours before 65% of the neurons are necrotic. And if you take uh, neurons uh, from autopsies from the brains of uh, human elderly uh, people with uh, 2.6, uh, an average of 2.6 hours post-mortem, uh, and put them in cell culture, um, they maintain, uh, they have uh, 70 and 90 percent viability even after two weeks in vitro. So apato apoptosis can be uh, stopped, possibly even reversed in theory. Um, uh, caspase inhibitors have been shown to considerably uh, uh, slow cell death in the hippocampus. And um, other uh, binding, other anti-apoptotic proteins has also been shown to uh, to um, uh, have an anti-apoptotic effect. So, aside from ischemic injury, there's uh, reperfusion injury that that happens if you start the circulation more than about 15 to 30 minutes uh, uh, after uh, the, the after of, of ischemia. Uh, much of the oxygen gets converted to superoxide. And uh, superoxide uh, damages the endothelium quite a lot, but it doesn't do so much damage to the parenchyma. And also in restarting the circulation, most of the superoxide converts, the superoxide converts almost all available nitric oxide to uh, peroxy nitrate, which uh, also very much damages the endothelium. So when's the brain destroyed? Well, it's, uh, we do know that it's rare for a person who's experienced more than six minutes of ischemia to be released from a hospital without neurological damage. But uh, the problem is uh, um, <clears throat> that after six minutes, the, ir the currently irreversible process of apoptosis starts. And um, most uh, ischemic damage is actually uh, uh, to the, uh, and reperfusion damage is to the blood vessels, not to the brain. So future medicine may be able to repair the blood vessels and stop uh, or reverse the apoptotic process in patients. Let's see.
Okay, there's a continuum between life and death. We notice that uh, going from fetus to uh, adult, um, there's a, a, an emergence of consciousness, and going from an, a, an adult undergoing neurodegeneration, there's a disappearance of consciousness. Uh, just when the heart stops, just because the doesn't mean that the brain is instantly destroyed. Uh, when the heart stops, uh, most body cells are still alive, and it takes hours for the tissues to die and decompose. Uh, hours to days. Uh, death is a process, it is not an event. Um, it's also worth considering that uh, information, story, information storage in the brain may be redundant because stroke victims often recover a lot of function. Well, in Christ we actually don't want to wait six minutes or, or any, any, any longer than we have to. Um, I'm just trying to say that uh, <clears throat> death is not what people often imagine it is. Uh, we try to arrange, get people to arrange funding and, and their contracts well ahead of time if they're terminal so that we can be in action immediately uh, when uh, death is pronounced. And give medications, restore once death is pronounced, give medications, restore circulation and respiration while cooling an ice bath, uh, then replace the blood with vitrification solution, quickly uh, cool to minus 120 and then slowly cool to minus liquid nitrogen temperature and store in liquid nitrogen and hopefully eventually reanimate them. So there's, there's some of the uh, uh, Cryonics medications. We want to uh, uh, give a sedative and neuroprotective. We want to support blood pressure, uh, stop clotting, uh, uh, fight acidosis, fight ischemia, reperfusion, injury. Um, in restarting the circulation, uh, we, we do not want it. This is, it's a do not resuscitate situation. Uh, we're not in CPR, we call it CPS and we use a, a thumper, a mechanical compression decompression device which uh, considerably improves perfusion pressure. Um, uh, we, ice water will rapidly uh, conduct heat from the body, and especially if the, if the water is flowing, and also if the blood is circulating, you've got the blood going, that also accelerates cooling. So there's uh, an ice bath that we, that we use, and you notice there's the uh, our uh, ACDC device, it's actually, it looks like a plumber's helper, but it's just, it gives suction on the upstroke and, and you get pressure on the downstroke and so you get more uh, circulation that way. And then uh, once they're cooled to below 10 degrees Celsius, we perfuse them with vitrification mixture until the brain is completely saturated and then uh, cool to liquid nitrogen temperature and store in these uh, big uh, uh, thermos bottle looking units that uh, are not at all dependent on electricity. So that's an example of cooling curves. Uh, the blue line is, is the core body temperature of a, of a cryonics uh, subject and uh, the red line, I mean the green line is the, um, the core brain temperature and the red line is the skin temperature. So this just shows uh, the rapid cooling to minus 120 and then the slow cooling to liquid nitrogen temperature of this particular person. So some people say that cryonics is not a science because no mammal has been cryonically preserved and revived, uh, but no one's seen a proton, neutron, or electron either. Scientists often rely on indirect uh, evidence to draw their conclusions. They predict the effect of years of global, global warming uh, determined technology to contain nuclear waste for hundreds of thousands of years. Parents cryopreserve umbilical cord stem cells in the expectation that future me medicine can utilize them. Uh, germ cells and DNA of extinct species are cryopreserved in expectations of future technology. So cryonic subjects may be preserved well enough to be revived, cured, and rejuvenated by future medicine. That's the assertion. So my conclusions are... Um, Revival from cryonic preservation is not certain. Uh, much I believe much indi indirect evidence indicates that cryonics may work. Uh, we do know that a body that's not cryonically preserved is soon destroyed. Uh, rejuvenation by sense may not happen soon enough for many people living today. And cryonics could be an ambulance to the future for them. And uh, cryonics subjects can wait decades or centuries for diseases to be cured and for sense to become a reality. So I, I thank the uh, founder of the Cryonics Institute and, and our many, many volunteers and uh, our many members and the 83 uh, human subjects, we call them patients, who are currently in storage and liquid nitrogen with us. <laughs>